and welcome to my shop. I've been preparing for a craft show and you've probably seen my two previous videos where I was getting my kits and my blanks together and then where I was prepping the blanks to turn. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm ready to start turning all of my blanks. Uh, I'm probably not going to film turning all the blanks because it would take hours upon hours and, and I don't think anybody would be interested in that. Um, what I am going to do is kind of show you what I go through to turn a pin. I'll show you uh, most of the turning of one pin and then I'll turn the camera off, get everything else turned. And there are a few of those blanks that are specialty blanks and uh, I think I will probably make individual videos for those. Uh, just basically the turning process. Here's the blank, turn it, Here's the pen, so it'll be a really short video, and I think that'll be more enjoyable. And uh, I think you might like seeing some of the some of the odder blanks or, or the more unique blanks turned individually. So we'll work on that. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to show you the process I go through when we we'll get this first pin turned and assembled. And uh, let's get started. I've brought my blank over to the lathe, but before I put it on the mandrel and start turning, there's one thing we have to pay close attention to. Each pin kit, and when you buy the pin kits, they will tell you, they being the company you buy it from, but each pin kit requires a specific set of bushings. And what the bushings let you do is they press against the brass tubes to hold the pin or the blank tight, and they let you know when you've turned it down to the proper size of your pin parts. So you need to pay very close attention. In this case, I'm turning a slim line, and both of my bushings are the same diameter but some pin kits have two and three different sizes of bushings. So pay very close attention to your instructions and make sure that you get your bushings and your blank on the mandrel in the proper order. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide my blank onto the mandrel and I've got a bushing back here in the back. It's a standard bushing for slimline pins. I'll put one between the two blanks. Apply the second blank and the final bushing and I want to put a third bushing on here, or a, another bushing, to kind of take up some of the space where the knurl nut goes. And I'm going to tighten that down. You'll see the blank spin. That won't matter. It's going to be trued up and round pretty soon anyway. All right. I'm going to bring the tailstock up. Now, what I like to do, and I don't know if this is good or bad, but one of the things that I like to do when I bring the tailstock up is I like to bump the lathe and then bring the tailstock up and I'll show you what I mean. I don't know if that's a good practice or not. My lathe was set on the slowest possible speed and I basically turn it on and bring the tailstock up. My 60 degree center goes into the little divot on the end of the mandrel and I can make sure everything's running true. I always worry being that I don't have a finely tuned machine that it may be a little bit out of kilter if I don't do it this way. And if I come in at an angle, I could bow the mandrel, which would mean my pin would not turn true. At this point, I'm very happy. The blank is on there. It's secure. Bring the banjo over, get the tool rest in place. And what I want to do with the tool rest is you want to make sure that it's as close to the blank as possible, but you still want to have clearance so that the blank doesn't bump. And you can go ahead, stand to the side, turn it on, still on slow, and everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and get my lathe sped up to its fastest possible speed, and then we'll begin turning. And you can see there's a big difference there between the slowest speed and the fastest. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring my dust collector up. Now, this is not a necessity. This is a nice to have. This is a Rockler dust collector. It's great for pin turning. Uh, it does help a little bit when you're truing and turning the blanks, but where it is the biggest benefit is when I get to sanding, it takes the majority of the dust away. A lot of the chips are too heavy to be sucked into the port and they still come out towards me. I will be wearing a smock and a face shield to protect my body and my face from flying chips. So let me go ahead and get my dust collector brought up. Okay. And I generally bring it up to where it just about touches the tool rest. Still make sure everything is spinning free and we're ready to begin turning. 
For truing my blanks up, I like to use a roughing gouge. Now this is a three quarter inch roughing gouge and you can see by how shiny it is that I've recently sharpened it. It's going to do a great job of taking the wood off these blanks and it's going to give me a very smooth finish. I actually like this tool so much and it gives me so much control because of the length of the tool that I will use this tool for the entire turning process. I finished the rough turning and now I'm ready to sand my blank. I'm going to use four grits of sandpaper. They are 150, 240, 320, and 400. We're going to remove the tool rest because we don't need our fingers getting caught under that and we'll get the banjo out of the way. I'm going to set the lathe to the slowest possible speed and we'll begin our sanding process. I just finished up with the 150 grit and as I look at the blank you'll see that there are some scratches. What I like to do is come back and go with the grain and I do this after each grit of sandpaper and this takes the scratches out and it'll give me a much nicer finish on my pen. Just keep rotating it and anytime you see a scratch just rub it right out. Once the blank is sanded, I need to turn my attention to getting a finish on it. My finish of choice is thin CA glue. For applying CA, I have a set of HDPE bushings that I made. Now these look really rough because they've been through a lot of pens with me. This is the first set I ever made. They last and they work great. What they do is, if you were to apply CA glue for this slimline and you wipe that CA over onto this bushing, it could glue, potentially glue, this blank to the bushing. It will not glue the blank to this HDPE bushing. Now it may stick to the bushing, but it will twist off very easily. You can also make these bushings out of UHMW or ultra high molecular weight plastic. I purchased a three quarter inch rod of HDPE off of amazon.com and it was very inexpensive, had it shipped to my house. You could also melt milk jugs, that's HDPE, make a block or a blank and turn your own. Um, I've seen these for sale. They cost about $6.95 a set. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and get the blank off of the mandrel. We'll get my HDPE bushings put on there and we'll proceed with the finishing process. When you take your blanks off of the mandrel, you want to keep them aligned. So I'm going to lay them aside and keep them aligned like this 
while I prep my mandrel for the bushings. I felt kind of bad about how my bushings looked, so I put them on the lathe, took my skew and cleaned them up. One quick pass, took all of the old CA off, and gave them a nice smooth finish. Now we'll go ahead and get them put on the mandrel so that we can finish our pin kit, or finish our pin blank. Once again, I like to turn the mandrel on or the lathe on and bring the live center up to the mandrel, engage it, and lock it. I have moved my dust collector back away from the mandrel because I no longer need its services. I've cut some paper towels into roughly somewhere between three quarter to one inch strips. They're about four inches long. I like to use blue painter's tape and I cover my finger with that painter's tape. That way the CA glue does not get on my finger. And if it does, you don't get the burn or the blister. Before I put a finish on my blank, I like to take a little denatured alcohol and clean the blank. This will get any dust from the sanding process off and make it ready for the CA glue finish. We'll get rid of any fuzzies and we'll give it a few seconds to dry because we don't want any dampness below our CA glue. We'll be back in a minute and we'll go ahead and put um, our finish on the blank. The way I like to apply CA finish is I take my paper towel, I fold it over in quarters, turn my lathe on, and I just like to drill a little CA right on the top and smooth it out. Working kind of fast, you don't want to work it too much because if it gets tacky it'll dry very quickly and you could dry your paper towel to the blank. Now that blank is already dry. Thin CA dries very very quickly. I'm going to probably apply four to five coats. On the last coat, I like to hit it with a quick dusting of accelerator, and I like to follow that up with one coat of medium CA, which I will apply by putting a dot of the CA on the paper towel and spreading it back and forth on the blank. For the back half, I'll use a new paper towel because that one gets pretty nasty. Whoops, one dot on the paper towel. We'll hit it with one quick spritz of accelerator. The blank is completely dry. And now we're going to go to our micro mesh. For the micro mesh, I like to go ahead and put the standard pin bushings back on. And the reason why, as I come down here and I put the CA on, it's going up a hill when it hits this bushing it could put a little bit of a lip on the end of that blank, which would mean it wouldn't have a perfectly smooth transition between the blank and the pin part. So by putting the bushings back on, I can micro mesh right over the bushings, which gives me a perfect fit with my pin parts. You can see that the bushing sticks a little, but I bring it right down to the end of the lathe and I can peel it right off. You will notice there is a little bit of CA glue on the end of the blank. That's not a problem. What I'll do, I'll show you in just one second what I do to take care of that. I take a piece of sandpaper. This I believe is about 100 grit. I put it on a flat, hard surface like the bed of the lathe or your table saw. I hold the pin perfectly flat and I swirl it very lightly, checking it periodically. And you can see that the glue is now removed. Let me do the front end of the pin. OK, 
okay, I want to lay this pin down in this orientation because this is the center, this is the nib, and we'll go ahead and get the back half cleaned up, and then we'll get it back on the lathe with the bushings, and we'll get it micro-meshed. Here's a perfect example. I don't know how well you can see this, but there's like a little fingernail on the end of this blank of CA glue. When I put this back on with the bushings and I sand across the bushings, that will disappear and I'll have a very smooth transition from this to the cap of my pen. As I use the micro mesh, I like to dip it in water. I'll micro mesh the pin, paying particular attention to the ends of the pin where it mates up to the bushing. I'm just going to run through the grits, wiping the slurry off after each grit. It does not take much if you do a really nice job putting your CA on. You can micro mesh it rather quickly and get a super nice finish. I cannot feel that fingernail at the end. I'm going to have a great transition from my blank to my pen components. What I want to do now is get out my polish and polish this blank. Once again, I'm just using a paper towel, fold it over four times, or fold it into a quarter. I'm just going to put the wax on, or the polish on, put a little pressure, build up a little bit of heat, make sure we get both blanks. You want to wipe from the center out. Don't go across your bushings, and here's why. See that black? It, the aluminum bushings, or whatever the material they're made of, Will, will give off that black and you'll drag that, especially if it's a light colored wood, onto your wood. So always polish from the center out. We'll let that dry for a few seconds, just like waxing your car. We'll come back and we'll buff it off. I think the pen looks really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and put a second coat of the polish just to build the luster up a little bit. I brought my blank over to my assembly table keeping the orientation the same as it was on the mandrel. This is the center, this is the nib, and this will be the cap. Slimline pens are fairly simple to put together. I always like to start with the nib. And you can see we have a very nice fit and a very nice transition between the nib and the wooden blank. Next up, since the pin press is already positioned at the proper distance, let's go ahead and put the cap in the back half of the pin. I'm just going to give it a tap to start it. And then I'm going to take a quick look at it and find the best place to put it. If there's any feature in the wood that I want to show off, I want to make sure that it doesn't get covered. I think we'll put it, well, let's see, how about we put it right here. Give it a nice tight fit. Cap is complete. Looks really nice. I'm going to expand my press a little bit. I'm going to insert the transmission. Now, I'm only going to insert the transmission up to the brass, and then I'll stop and I'll test the transmission with a the, the ink to make sure that it's not too far in to the pin. Most likely, I'll have to press it a little farther in, but that's okay. We want to do these micro adjustments. Very carefully press it. Now we'll do a quick test. You can see that the ink is not quite coming far enough out, so we're going to press it in again about half the distance. See this little indention right here? About half that distance. I am going to use a little piece of cardboard there. All right. Let's 
perfect. The pin comes out just about the right amount and it retracts completely inside of the nib. We'll go ahead and put our trim ring on and I'll take a quick peek at this and see what the best way to line it up is. Looks like it lines up like this. You want to line your pin up while it's closed so it looks its best and you can see we have a beautiful pin. The first of my 59 individual items is finished. Only 58 to go. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off. I'm going to get busy turning these and when everything is done I'll come back and I'll show you all of the individual items together. It sounds kind of odd, individual items together, but I'll show you everything that I've turned in this, this set. Hello everybody. Last night after I pressed that pin into a kit, it was pretty late in the evening and I decided to call it a night. Uh, so I went in, had a little dinner, grabbed a shower, and started kind of going through the video. I like to kind of edit my video as I make it. Uh, and that way, when it comes time to do the final editing, you know, I edit the final piece and I can just watch it back through and, you know, make any tweaks. Um, and I noticed the video was getting rather long. And I got to thinking, I've got 58 other items here to turn. Probably 35 of them are probably things that I want to give a shout out on. So let's round that down to 30 just, just for the sake of doing it. And say I give a half a minute a piece for the shout out, 30 seconds a piece. Uh, that's 15 minutes just for the shout outs. Now they are, the shout outs are extremely important to me because I want to say thank you. Um, so my thought was instead of waiting on this video and adding another 15 minutes to it, which I think will just make it far too long, I'm going to go ahead and end this turning video. I've pretty well showed you the entire process from start to finish. Um, so I'm going to end this video. I'm going to go ahead and start my turning. I'll make the individual videos for the specialty pins that I have. And then when everything is done, as I'm turning them, I'm taking the photos and I'll prepare the slides for the thank yous. So I'll close everything down at the very end with a video, a thank you video or a shout out video. Uh, I think that might be better. I, I just hate to make these videos far too long because, you know, I know you guys have important things to do. You have other videos you want to watch, and I don't expect you to sit and watch a 45-minute video uh, of mine. So I'm going to call it quits. I want to thank you for joining me for this video. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. Have a great evening, everybody.